1955, the seeds of something great were beginning to grow. What it might become? Those young men in Oxford, Ohio had not concept nor idea. Instead, they focused on their values and beliefs. Values that led to the birth of Sigma Chi. In my case, Sigma Chi gave me a value system that I have lived by all these years. I think, I think the founders, they did so much for us, and I think, I think it's tough to focus in on just one, but I think we do a good job of kind of combining all three. So we think about the friendship piece, the justice piece, and the learning, and I think the founders really, they brought to us a holistic fraternity and an opportunity to grow in each one of those areas. So I think we'd be we're doing ourselves an injustice only to focus on one. Uh, one of the biggest lessons is just being a brother. Like, they were always there for each other um, from the things I've read, and I, I just try to be there for my brothers. Do things the right way. Do them with energy and courage and conviction, and in the long run, you will succeed. A high sense of honor and a deep sense of personal responsibility. Uh, to me, that probably is the strongest value statement that one can have. And it's probably the most powerful compass that one can have as well. The founders were all about action. They made sure that they were not hypocrites, ever. They had a code of values, the ones that we hold dear today. And they lived those every day. And it was natural to them because nothing else would be acceptable. It, it's given me such a uh, compass to live my life by a moral compass um, you know I, I guess it's kind of given me some spirituality as well and you know uh, that's something that was absent in my life but for me it's personally it's integrity um, I, I think the uh, the concept of all the different ideals and temperaments um, and, and, and convictions that we have in Sigma Chi are so are so complex and so deep um, but uh, I think that when you start with integrity, everything else flows from there. Man is by nature and education a social being. There is something in the human heart and mind which makes us crave and seek association with our fellow men. But is it enough? Of course! We want sympathy, friendship, knowledge, and protection. A mind that thinks as we think. A heart that feels as we feel. Knowledge, which comes from social intercourse. Protection, which comes from those interested in our welfare and happiness. The pleasures of life are sweeter when enjoyed with others, and its toils and burdens lighter when others share them I, with I us. I fear your passion is too much, and your words will get us into trouble. Man naturally seeks another self, a kindred spirit. Many men are wiser than one man, and each brings something to the common treasure. May I not say, therefore, that great profit may be derived from such association, and that the pleasures derived from it may continue with us through life. I still question if it's the right course of action. To challenge them, yes, without question. Our trust in these men was misplaced, or I believe it to be. We must confront them and stand for our convictions. And what then? But then we go on to form new associations, new connections, new bonds. And who will write the letter? Our job as brothers is to make each other the best men we can possibly make each other be. And the only way we can do that is by helping each other, and that includes holding each other accountable. So we can be the better man and make a difference in the world, because that's what Simichai expects of each and every one of us. Uh, faced with a hard choice, yeah, you, you've got to be able to come back to your values. How does this further friendship, justice, and learning? 
And when you know that something is detrimental to those purposes and detrimental to the sanctity of our brotherhood, um, you, have to, you have to show some courage. And just like when Benjamin Pyruncal threw down his Deke badge uh, on that table, it takes, it takes some motivation, it takes some conviction, and it takes a lot of courage. Um, that's, one of the, that's one of the reasons that that's one of our ideals, is it does take a lot of courage to do the right thing in a lot of different situations. That's back to being consistent with the values. It's always hard to confront anyone, particularly someone that you barely care for. But if you don't hold them accountable to what they voluntarily agreed to do and be, you're not doing your job. An unwillingness to put up with something that they thought was, it's wrong. It should not be this way that we cannot live with. We'll have to do something on our own. They, they had an injustice that happened and they didn't think, well, we'll just, you know, we'll let that go by. They said, no, there's something wrong that's happened here. And they confronted the issue and, and held their fellow uh, Deke members accountable. Dear Brother Witt, we six loyal members of the Kappa chapter of the Delta Kappa Epsilon fraternity invite the six of you to be our guest at supper, date, place, and our name, with the purpose on our part of discussing with you the issue that has arisen between us in relation to the candidates for the office of poet in the Aradelphian Literary Society. You are determined in supporting Omar Newman, a member of our chapter, for the office named. That is your privilege and your right, and we do not question it. But we do not think that Omar is the candidate best qualified, and we propose to vote for a man of our own choice. Is that right? Of course. I wrote it. I will stand behind it. I'm still skeptical, but I, I will stand with you. That's the spirit, Frank. With a united front, we're strong, just as strong as they are. But we are their juniors. They will think of us as freshmen. There are no freshmen when justice is at stake. How do you propose the issue be resolved? I don't know. I think the, the biggest challenge is really making sure that at every turn you're living those values, um, that every day you're really bringing it to life. It's tough to, be, to bring your best self you know, to work, to class, to the fraternity every day. And I, I definitely, I think that's the biggest challenge is figuring out you know, how you can get out of bed in the morning and still live the values even on your off day. It, it would be really to start understanding the greater good we can do when we just live by the ritual. Accountability is actually the most difficult part of true brotherhood. But without it, we don't have true brotherhood. So we must hold each other accountable because that's all part of making each other the best man we can possibly be. But the founders themselves were so adept, remarkably adept at navigating um, decisions that they had to make because they stayed true to their principles. How do we expect to look and use and read and learn the greatest leadership book ever written, if we can't even find it, can't even explore it, don't live it, love it, and learn it. Um, so I would say we need to get committed back to our ritual. I think it's finding that balance between the college experience and the Sigma Chi experience. And they don't have to be two different things, but a lot of people can't find the balance between the two of going out having fun, but showing the self-control and being responsible. Isaac, what if they don't come? At the least, we will be stuck for dinner. Frank asks a good question. Suppose they've had a meeting where we have not been invited and they decide to expel us. My God, they will not expel me. I'll resign before they do. They may not be time for that. This can't be the spirit of Delta Kappa Epsilon. A year ago, they encouraged us to cultivate the freedom of individuality. No doubt they meant it. But political aspiration seems to have gotten in the way. We are letting our imagination run wild. They, they wouldn't be so rude to ignore our invitation to talk. However arbitrary Whitelaw Reed may be, he is still a gentleman. Good afternoon. I'm sorry to be so late. Oh, it's all right, Wit, so long as you've come. This is Brother Milliken, an alumnus of our chapter from Hamilton, Ohio. Glad to meet you, boys. Uh, supper will be served in the next room. We won't be staying. Where are the other members of our chapter? Aren't they coming? No, they're not. It's just Mr. Milliken and myself. This thing that's grown between us, Wit, it's bigger than you know and far more important than it sounds. 
Because if you can tell us how we should vote, where does it end? Wait, can't we sit and discuss this? There's nothing to discuss. Insubordination is not debatable. Insubordination? That's what we call it. Wit, I think you better let me handle this. I am a man of few words, and I've got no time to waste. The six of you are impudent, disloyal, and rebellious. <laughs> I cannot believe what I'm hearing. And if my words carry any weight with the Kappa chapter of the Delta Kappa Epsilon fraternity, I recommend that Cooper and Bell be reprimanded severely and placed on probation. But for you four rabble-rousers, Runkle, Scobie, Jordan Caldwell, I recommend immediate expulsion from the fraternity. So you had it fixed before you even arrived? I'm afraid so. My God. Reed, I will not give you the satisfaction. I did not join this fraternity to be anybody's tool. There's my answer. I can't speak for the others, but I am no longer a deke. Nor I. You really left us no choice, Wit. Founder Jordan, best known, of course, for the Jordan Standard, and he gave us a minimum standard. Uh, and, and that's what's so fantastic about the, the Jordan Standard, is that everybody who wears our badge has met that standard. Well, I think um, Scobie was really the one who said it best when he said, uh, nothing so much tends to promote friendship as the free mutual interchange of one's thoughts, hopes, and fears with one in whom we can confide. And I think that's really indicative of the way that he was uh, with the rest of the founders. They saw in him uh, an intellect and, and a contribution that he could make that the other six didn't have. And that's, that's uh, really an, a very early showing of the spirit of Sigma Chi, to welcome someone who's a little different from the rest of you into the group. I think today when we look at um, following a, a set course of action that we know is the, right, is the right thing deep in our hearts, it's important that we keep doing that because without the drive to go forward, and accomplish our, our missions, our, our ideals, our goals, whatever they are, um, we're, we're, we get complacent and we get lazy. And I think that watching the, you know, a guy like James Parks Caldwell as such a young man to accomplish so many things the way that he did in life uh, and with the talent and the intellect and the remarkable character that he had and the way that he went about doing it, all of that is so, is so vital to the lessons that we have today. And he said, you know what, we are, we are gentlemen. Sigma Chi's are gentlemen, and the world expects us to be gentlemen. The world needs gentlemen. The world needs men of such manner, I believe is what he said. And he laid forth those characteristics that we must identify to perpetuate our order. I want to get back to what our founders taught us. Um, I want to get back to what they really brought us together for. The fact that we've been around since 1855, we revere our seven founders, but there have been so many brothers since those seven founders who have also made Sigma Chi what it is. Push yourselves to live your values every day and also lead, lead with integrity. Um, you know, know that if it's right in your heart that it's the right thing to do. I think it's really important to show some courage and be brave and, and have that high ambition of leaving your chapter better than what you found it. Sigma Chi is so much bigger than just yourself or your undergraduate brothers or your, uh, your own chapter. It really is. 250,000 living men who are holding you to an expectation that you're going to uphold the values and the integrity and, um, and the, the vision of the chapter. Be true to yourself, be true to your ideals, be true to your friends, uh, but most of all, don't let fear stop you from accomplishing what we all know you can accomplish. As much as I have done within Sigma Chi, and I guess for Sigma Chi, Sigma Chi has done more, much more than that for me. Well, I think, Chuck, we often say is that every time that our cup gets half empty in Sigma Chi, the next day somebody fills it back up. Overflowing. Right. <laughs> Think of the 200,000 living Sigma Chi's. Think of the tens of thousands of undergraduates 
And if seven men can do that, think of what we can all do and should do. And when you know that you have those strong arms around you, that's when you build unity. That's when you become a brother's keeper. I would ask my undergraduate brothers a question. It would be this. What is your legacy going to be? We need to be understanding that the seas are, and the sand are shifting, and we better be ready to take on that next challenge. Are you going to take what you learned here, and you're going to pass it on? Are you going to help make other brothers better? Are you going to make your chapter stronger than it's ever been? So when you graduate, you can look back and say, I left it all on the floor. I gave it all I had. I've made a difference in the lives of others, and I've allowed others to make a difference in my life. And that's the beginning of that long Sigma Chi legacy. And so, is it resolved? I. 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 I.